Hi, this is Karen. Welcome to my home. Um, we're going to do lesson five today, which is probably the scariest lesson, but I think I've come up with a way to make it the easiest to understand lesson. Um, it's really important that you watch this video probably a couple of times so you get it. Uh, we're only doing one page in my chord book. It's page 16. So this is kind of a critical page at, at this juncture in our, in our uh, series on the first aid chord kit. So turn to page 16 and we're going to talk about scales and key signatures. Almost everything in music is based on scales. So you, it's really imperative that you understand them, practice them, and they're kind of fun if you do some of the you know, little tricks that I'll show you now in this lesson. Okay, today this lesson, number five, is the, probably the most confusing, but yet the most important. It's, we're only going to do one page in the book. It's page 16. Everybody that buys my book makes a comment about what on earth is that? It looks like totally scary and totally complicated, but it really isn't if someone takes the time to explain it to you simply. So by the time we're done with this lesson, page 16, you should have a very good, if I do my job right, a very good understanding of scales and key signatures, okay? Now, the first thing you need to know that's really, really important is the word key, signature, and scale mean the same thing. The key signature is the scale on which the song was written or with which the song was written. So my teacher used to say to me, play the song in the key of G. What she didn't tell me and explain to me, and she may have tried, was that it simply means that the composer used the G scale to write the song. The chords came from the scale, the melody came from the scale, the number of sharps and flats in the song came from the scale, and where the song, what was the pitch? Was it a high key, a low scale? So how does a composer pick what key they want to play in? So there's, once you understand scales, and then I, if, if you've had lessons, you're probably like me, you remember that the teacher always, I, I had to learn like a scale a week. So I would go, then I'd learn. And then you had to get the fingering right. And then, so I play it over and over and over and I'd learn the C scale. What she didn't bother to tell me was why I was learning that scale. I just thought they were finger warm ups and often questioned why, why did I have to learn 15 of them if I only had to warm up my fingers. I could have done that all with one scale. So if you remember, um, in, one, in some of my other uh, videos, we talked about the recipe for a scale. Instead of memorizing 15 different scales, it's a lot easier if you actually learn the pattern that the scale takes. So I have a recipe for a major scale. All right, so the recipe for the major scale in half steps is two whole steps and a half, three whole steps and a half. So just keep saying that to yourself. A major scale, the recipe or the how you do it is two whole steps and a half, two and a half, and three and a half. All right, so let me show you how that works. If I want to play a C scale, I put my thumb on C. Now, there are eight notes in a scale. I only have five fingers. So I need to have three extra fingers to play the eight notes. So this is how you remember the fingering. Remember, your thumb is always finger one. One, two, three, four, five. So you start with finger one and you use the first three. So three and then five. Three, thumb under, and then you grow five new fingers. So it's C and it's two whole steps now. We want two and a half and three and a half. A whole step from C is D. A whole step from D is E. Now, always at the half step, when you get to your third finger, 
that's where the half step is and that's really all you have to remember because the rest are all whole steps and if you're at the end you to end on the right note you have to be at a half step so it's one two three all right I always take my thumb under at the half step it's a half step between E and F because there's no black note there now I lay my hands out it's whole 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 and if you did it if you did it right you will be you'll have a half step because you started on C and you're going to end on C see so if someone says to you play a song in the key of C if you play the song you will notice it's all white keys now coming down I use all five fingers third finger over okay and a lot of people get in a bad habit they hold them down don't hold them down play them individually okay left hand if you want to play a scale I use all five fingers going up third finger goes over going down thumb under and then I lay my hand out and I can finish it's kind of confusing when you try to do them together so you might want to go really slow okay and right now actually at the, this point it's not that important that you play both hands together you can just learn, learn the scale one just one hand okay so on page 16 in the book you will notice that the C scale C D E F G A B C is no sharps and no flats okay then we're going to go to the G scale the G scale and you can tell if the scale is right or wrong if I play the G scale on all white notes can you tell that it's not right something's wrong it's like the song do re mi fa so la ti do I can't sing but that's okay um, you can your ear will tell you if I play a D scale It doesn't sound right so you you just have to use the pattern and go D whole step whole step now that's only a half so in order to make that um, the next note a whole step from E I would have to sharp it now I'm where I'm supposed to have a half step so I just take my thumb under whole step whole step now I need another whole step which would be there okay now if I want to play a G scale whole step whole step thumb under at the half whole whole E to F is only a half the the recipe says I have to have a whole so I have to sharp that F and G that kind of explains why some scales have sharps why do some scales have flats well let's find out I want to play an F scale I'll go down here. F, whole step, whole step. Now I need a half step. And the half step is not B, it's B flat. It cannot be F sharp. Here's the reason. The scale has to go up alphabetically. You cannot have a A note and an A sharp note in the same scale. So this has to be called B flat. F, G, A, B flat, D, E, F, and G. So the F scale or the key of F has one flat and it is B flat. All right? E flat. Let's say you want to make a scale out of that. These always kind of confused me. Now they don't because I know the pattern. E flat, whole step, whole step, half, whole, whole, and then a whole and a half all right so if I look on here the E flat scale has three flats B flat E flat and A flat all right so you can see by looking at the chart if you have the book on page 16 that they're very organized and what's really cool if you really start to study it and you look the key of C has no sharps or flats the key of G has one sharp and it's in step seven the key of D has two sharps, 
step seven moved over to three and the new sharp appears at seven. So it's very mathematical and very interesting and the same with the flats. So let's take a break for just a minute because I'm going to change over to my whiteboard and, uh, and talk to you some more about the order for sharps and flats. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the old-fashioned way. I, I know my videos are pretty simple and they're, you know, I don't use a lot of um, computer and technology, but I think sometimes when I'm talking it's easier to show you something on a whiteboard uh, instead of referring to a page. We're still on page 16 in the book, but now I want to talk about the order for sharps and flats because it'll kind of help explain how this happened how some scales have sharps, some scales have flats, and how many. So if you take and you put um, a staff, and at the beginning of every uh, piece of music, you'll see the treble clef and the bass clef. Um, right now we're just going to concentrate on the treble clef. So when you open a piece of music, um, the big note easy play pieces, the songs that you find in these books, will not show key signatures, ever. There will never be a sharp or flat at the beginning. They will put them, actually, let me find one in here. They will put them in the song, in the next to the note itself, like here. See, they, they want you to play, oh gosh, these are all in the key of C. Um, but they'll put the flats or the sharps next to the note that they want you to flat or sharp. Um, so, but in regular music, when you pick it up, have you ever just started playing a song and you go, oh, something's wrong. These notes don't sound right. It's usually because you forgot to look at something called the key signature. Now, when definition of signature, you have a time signature for counting. If you don't know about counting, you might want to check out my everything you know, need to know to play the piano book. It'll tell you all about that. But the key signature, signature means it's important that you sign it and that's the way it is. So anything you put your signature on, you're verifying something. So the key signature in a song is, well that's why they call it the key. It's the key to the song. It's everything. It's the melody, it's the chords, it's all of it. So it technically is the key to the song. If there's nothing there, it is the key of C. And in our classes, we called it the Spanish key. The hot, get it? C? Oh, never mind. So when you play, when you look at this, if there's nothing there, you pretty much know that you're going to be playing on all white notes unless they put an accidental in there. Then they have to draw the sharp or the flat. That's why they call it an accident. Accidentally have to add, add it. Now, if there's one sharp in the key signature, it's not just randomly put somewhere. It's always the same. There are certain things in music, there's very few things that, that are, are not, um, th well, there's just certain amount of things that are, that's the way it is and it never will change, ever. So it, this is one of them. If there's one sharp in the key signature, it is always F sharp, always. That means two things. Number one, you have to sharp all the Fs, and they only tell you once, uh, unless you're playing big note easy play, and then they'll put a sharp next to every F. But for you, if you're playing regular music, like out of a hymnal or a regular, you know, just a regularly written uh, piece of music, that F sharp is really important for you to know. So the first thing you have to think of is, okay, before I even start to play this song, I have to play every F note sharped. It's, it'll be a black note, okay? The second thing it tells the, the musician is that the composer used the G scale to write the song. All right, for me, that was always a problem. The teacher would say, what key are you in? Well, uh, I, well then you have to remember all of this. Everything on this scale sheet would have to be memorized. Most people do not have a memory like that, including me. So I'll show you how to cheat. All you have to do is say the next letter in the alphabet. Name the sharp, which is F sharp, and say it's key of G. So the letter G follows the letter F, and that's the way it is. Okay, so it's one sharp is the key of 
G. The name of the sharp is always F sharp. Now I remember that um, just like remember every good bird does fly in F A C E. I remember that fat. Okay, and we'll we'll carry on with that. If there's two sharps in the key signature, the second sharp is always C. Now you'll notice in column seven of the scale sheet that the order for sharps is right there. All the new sharps always appear in column seven in step number seven of the scale. All right, fat cats. All right, so if I pick up a piece of music and there's two sharps, they are always F sharp and G sharp. And the key is name the last sharp, which is C, say the next letter in the alphabet, which is D. The D scale has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, okay? All right, if there's three, fat cats go. F, C, G, that note way up there is a G. And the letter, the next letter in the musical alphabet is not H, by the way, is A, you go back to A. Fat cats go, it's three sharps, is always the key of A. Four sharps, down. D sharp, key of E. Okay, so you can just, actually just move it up and name the next, the next half step up and it'll also give you the name. Alleys. Five sharps, F, C, G, D, A. Key of B. The key of B has five sharps. I don't like that key. I don't like anything past four. But some people like sharps better than flats. I prefer flats. Eating. Okay. E sharp. Now, this is not the key of F. E sharp is an F. <laughs> so it's the key of F sharp. All right. And the last one is birds. And B sharp is a C, so this will be the key of C sharp. So these last two, you just say the key of F sharp and the key of C sharp, okay? So order for flats, sharps I mean. Fat cats go down alleys eating birds. It never changes. So if you pick up a piece of music and there's four sharps, they're always F, C, G, and D, and it's the key of E, or the composer used the E scale to write the song. And remember when we were practicing the scales? If you play, if you start on an E, you will know, notice that those are the four sharps that you have to play. All right? Now, that's the order for sharps. The order for flats is easier, actually. And the flatted keys are mostly on the black keys. So we go like this. If there are, if there's only one flat, it is always B flat, always. <clears throat> the best way to remember what scale has the B flat in it is the word flat starts with an F. So one flat sitting there all by itself is the key of F. After you get that, the rest are really easy. So if you look at the scale sheet, you will notice the F scale has one flat. That scale is B flat, okay? All right, two flats, and we'll go with this B flat. The second flat is E flat. Now to tell me what scale that is, all I do is name the next to the last flat. So B flat and E flat are the flats. The scale that has two flats in it is B flat. That's all you have to do, just back up one flat and name it. B flat, E flat, A flat. All right, B, E, A, the name of the key or the scale is E flat. Just back up one. D flat. And it's the key of A flat, see? Just back up one. Now what does that spell? It spells bead. All right, I learned the hard way what a bead is. Uh, you could wear beads as a necklace, but the inside rim of a tire on your car is called the bead. 
and if you hit that bead on a gutter or uh, uh, or anything while you're you know while you're turning a corner your tire will go completely flat so this is how I remember bead G go flat completely flat okay so the order for flats B E A D goes completely flat if I have a song and I have that many flats, I probably don't want to play it anyway. But B, E, A, D, G, if I have that many flats, it's the key of D flat. If I have this many flats, it's the key of G flat. So that's all there is to it. And it's, it's kind of important to know before you start to play a song that that's, what, that's what's happening. What's really cool is when you, now as we get into the circle and understanding all these scales and chords, it's really cool to notice these little detail things, like, like this point. Watch this. Remember the order for sharps? Order for sharps. Fat cats go down alleys eating birds. Look at this. Order for flats. Fat cats go down alleys eating birds. They're just reversed. I don't know how, I don't know why, but music is so amazing when you start to analyze things and you go, how did that happen? So, um, and I really, for me as a hobbyist and a teacher, I don't really want to know how that happened. I'm sure somebody knows. If you know, you can email me and let me know. But um, it's, it's really fascinating. So... Just remember, and don't say fat cats go down alleys eating birds out loud because it won't be very impressive to another musician, but it will help you uh, to play the music. All right? So knowing that now, watch this. Chords come from scales. So there are eight notes in a scale, right? I'm sure you're sitting next to your computer saying, right. All right. If I'm playing a C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And if you've been around musicians, you probably hear them say, oh, play one, four, five, play two, three, six, play, you know, they blurt out numbers and expect, and, and professional musicians would know immediately what that means. If, if the composer says, play a song in the key of C, and we're going to play one, four, five, chord progression, that means they're going to use step one, step four, and step five for a chord. All right? But for now, all I want you to know is that the major chord comes from a scale. Remember the bisquick and I told you how important it is to spell? The rule for a major chord, and it's on page 16 also, is the root or number one, the third and the fifth. That explains this mess over here that you see that made no sense to you up to now. So in any key, the major chord, if you just see a capital letter all by itself, like that, and that would be like over at the top, over the, over the melody, and I'll show you in this book. So if you see a C like that up there, the composer knew that to play that chord, he would need to play the first, the third, and the fifth step of a scale. So that's why C chord is spelled C-E-G. It's also why it falls into the pattern. Remember the pattern? Whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 half. All right, the first, the third, and the fifth. This is this is four half steps and this is three half steps. So to spell a C chord is C E G. Now the two recipes come together. The cheaty chord, 43. Okay, it's four half steps from C to E. And it's three half steps from E to G. So that takes care of that pattern. And two and a half and three and a half is the pattern for a major scale. Chords come from scales. All chords come from scales. What later on when we add the letters like sevenths and major sevenths and ninths and sixths, that means we're just going to add to the first, third, and fifth. That's the sixth, seven, eight, and then we keep going. That'll be the numbered chords. 
And all we're going to do then is add to the basic chord, add some, some notes to this chord. Always now just remember the rule for a major chord is one, three, and five. Later on we'll talk about minor. One, three flat, and five. Augmented. One, three, five sharp. Diminished. One, three flat, five flat. All right? So that's what this is. So it's not really important that you know how to do minor, diminished, and augmented right now. What's important is that you understand that chords come from scales. Now, watch this. Here is why the D chord has a sharp in it. The D scale, and if you're just writing these out, the easiest way to do this is to write, just write down the letters. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D. It helps if you know the alphabet. All right, if I played this, and you can't see the keyboard, but just listen. Totally not right. Some of these notes have to have a sharp in it. Is it a whole step from D to E? Yes. Is it a whole step from E to F? No, it's only a half step. I can't change the E because it'll mess up my, my first and second steps. So I have to raise this to make it a whole step from E. That makes it a half step, so that's correct. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C is not. It's only a half. I can't change the B. I have to sharp the C. And then it ends up a half step from D. That's why a D chord, because of the rule, D, F sharp, and A. That can't be an F. It has to be an F sharp to be a D major chord. Let's do one more. Let's do F. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F. All right, now listen if I play it. Okay, one of those notes is wrong, and if your ear was on, you could probably hear it was right about there. So we'll just check it. I wrote it out. Now I'm going to check. F, it, this is a whole step, F to G. G to A is a whole step. Now I need a half step. A to B is a whole step, so I need to flat this note. Now I have a whole step here. C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, and E to F is a half. Okay? So the F scale, or the F chord is still F, A, C, but the F scale, the key of F, if I'm going to play a song, I have to remember to flat all the Bs. Now, this is, this is a little bit overwhelming um, to any beginner. But if you've had a little bit of music, you probably have heard some or all of this along the way. But I, I, like me, I hope that the way I explain it is a little easier to understand. Sometimes I talk kind of fast. But it would behoove you to play this video over and over and over and just listen to it multiple times because of repetition. And down at the bottom it says how to use the charts. Um, we pretty much covered all of this. But right now I, I just kind of want you to sit down at the piano and just pick a note. Any note. Alright, so just pick any, any note. Just close your eyes, pick a note, and try to make a scale out of it. So I'm going to pick an A. Whole step, whole step, half, whole, whole. Then when I play, I can see because I played the scale, if you just play the first five notes, you'll, get a, you'll make the chord. In fact, that's a really good exercise to do. Just start on C and go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. And don't even bother doing the rest at this point. Just do the first five. So you go. Then play every other note and make a chord. If I move to D, I have to have that sharp there, remember? Whole step, whole step, half, whole. Make a chord out of it. So, E, F, G, and so 
forth and do the black ones too. So it might take you a little longer to do the black ones. Whole step, whole step, half, whole. So it's two whole steps, a half, and a whole. Okay? And then make a chord out of it. Alright, good exercises for the week for you to do. And then next week we're going to carry on and page 17 and we're going to talk about the Bisquick chords and how they came about. And so now that you have a little bit of an understanding of the scales, I think you're going to find the rest of the book to be really, really easy. Okay, to sum up this lesson, it, I know I gave you a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Um, Although I've seen some books that drag it out for pages and pages or over an entire series of books before you learn about all the scales and all the key signatures. Um, it's actually pretty easy to understand if you study page 16, I mean really study it, look at the scales, play them, and you'll probably discover a lot of things on your own that I didn't even talk about. <coughs> so, but I would like to talk to you about how important it is to get the foundation in your music. If you're learning chords right now, and I may have done this series kind of backwards, I probably, and I will do a, a series on this book, which I think is the most important book that I've written. If you don't have a good foundation and you don't understand sharps and flats and counting and all of that, you really need to, to get this book that I have. Um, I've taught adults and children for 40 years. And it, it's important that you realize that most of the time if you buy a book or a series of books, it takes like up to level five before you get all the information that you need. They just kind of piecemeal it for you. So along the way, when it could have been a lot easier, it actually was more, the, the further you get into the books, the more confusing it gets. Because they don't tell you why you're doing what you're doing. And that was... That was the case with me. I think I would be a much better performing musician and being able to memorize it had I known chord structure and known how, you know, all these little details while I was beginning to learn to play. So instead of buying a whole series of books, I decided just to write down everything you need to know to play the piano or actually to play music. It's not just for piano. A lot of people email me and say, well, I play guitar or I play trombone, but I never really understood chords. And I thank you for your emails because it really helps me to know what to say to you when I'm doing these. Um, I know a lot of guitar players that have no idea why they're playing the chords that they're playing. And when they hear about how the chords actually work together, it makes their guitar playing so much more fun. Um, so today's lesson, especially for a guitar player, is really important. And as we talk about the lessons, we're going to be using this circle a lot. And I know, because I've gotten some comments, my circle is different. Um, the classical circle, or the classic circle that I grew up with, has the G, the circle of fifths going this way, and the F chord and all the flats go this way. I prefer this, this method, so stick with me. If you'd like the PDF, it will be up on our website, sacramentomusicgroup.com, and you can download it and print it. Um, I just laminated mine, and then I cut it out. Um, also, there'll be, the, there'll be two pages that, that you'll download. One has a whole bunch of these little arrows on it, and I just put them on so I could make the circles. But um, later on, you'll know why. You, you, you can turn this. If you never put this little thing on there, it won't make any difference. But it's really kind of important now that you either make your own circle or you can, if you buy my book from this point on, this sheet will come with it and then you can just cut the circle out. Uh, it, and it's not really good to leave it on the sheet. It's better to have it cut out and round. So you can, buy, you can download the PDF for the circle. You can order my book, which I'm really proud of, my chord book. It comes with two DVDs. Um, these DVDs were done in a group situation um, when I was teaching uh, organ and keyboard classes uh, when I was working in our retail store and this is really fun because it's like you're in the group of people and we're laughing and joking and 
uh, it's kind of crazy sometimes, but um, everyone who sees it really enjoys watching it because it's different. It's not just me talking to you, it's a whole class. So all of my books, this one has DVDs that were done in the class. We did a, a series on the circle. So once we get through this cord book, you're really going to want to get that circle DVD uh, and, and cord. So it's kind of easier on postage if you order them all at the same time. Uh, my suggestions, my three favorites are the circle of cords, the first aid cord kit, and if you don't know all the details about music, uh, this one. But definitely this with the circle is probably the best set at this point because when you get done with this book, you're going to want to know more about the circle. So thank you for joining me this week and we'll see you all for lesson six.